The matte black Sky Active X prototype looks like a rough Mazda 3, perhaps reconstructed after a bad wreck by an over-enthusiastic owner of a spot welder and lots of gaffer's tape. Rib Duck spoke out of the dash sending two breaths of conditioned air to no one in particular. Even its revolutionary engine, the thing we're here to experience, is entombed in a massive, nondescript cover to mask its unseemly noises. It's a wild, strange way to meet a very unconventional vehicle that promises diesel-like fuel economy, a wide torque band, and an exotic method for burning less gas than never before. It takes a few hours for Mazda's engineers to explain the fundamental principles of operation. For more detail, read our Sky Active X Spark Controlled Compression Ignition Explainer, but here's a very brief overview. Sky Active X marries some traditional gasoline engine characteristics with a novel form of compression ignition called SPXI. The key for Sky Active X is to use very high compression in the cylinder and an extremely lean fuel air mixture. Squeezed right to the cusp of getting hot enough to blow up all on its own, which is very hard to predict, a squirt of extra gas and a spark interject to cross that compression ignition threshold in a controlled and predictable manner. See the animation below. That takes a few essential components to get just right. One is a massive amount of computer processing power and some pressure sensors in the individual cylinders, because the ambient conditions change how and when these things happen. Sky Active X uses a clutched supercharger to pump in additional air when needed to nail the mixture precisely, and high pressure injectors to get the low ratios of fuel to disperse properly in the chamber. And since it operates like a conventional gasoline engine sometimes, it uses valve timing to lower the very high compression ratio so it doesn't reach combustion ignition in that mode. In practice, the Sky Active X runs in compression ignition mode most of the time. In practical terms, that means it drives like a torquey gasoline Sky Active engine. The torque curve is broad and flat, diesel-like in that respect. That also means it can get away with using a six-speed transmission and a lower final drive for better response. There's enough grunt and economy together that Mazda can let the engine spin faster, at 60 miles per hour, it's running at roughly 1000 more RPM than a similar gas engine, with greater efficiency. Sky Active X is complex, and Mazda Vice President of R&D and Design Masashi Otsuka admits it will be an expensive engine to build. But, he said to us before we drove the cars, with a big lopsided smile, it's less expensive than a hybrid. That speaks to Mazda's philosophy in building the Sky Active engine range in general. Mazda has avoided electrification almost entirely, what electrification it employs is either very minimal, i.e. loop regenerative braking and capacitor system, or an itch, demi of, with its rotary range extender option. Rather than build a bunch of hybrids and EVs that are dependent on incentives to sell, and still don't sell that well, Mazda does have a point here. The company decided long ago to just improve the internal combustion engine as much as possible. That means it has the lowest average EPA fuel economy of any manufacturer, although its overall volume is small, its sales have suffered recently, and it doesn't sell any large and inefficient SUVs or trucks. Mazda's strategy is technically sound, but perhaps not as effective in the real world as it might hope. Then again, as the company is eager to point out, neither is the real world economy of the downsized turbocharged engine trend. They're great at EPA testing but miserably thirsty in the real world. Sky Active X isn't the final result of this process, there will be more electrification as that becomes necessary and or demanded by the marketplace. There's a next generation pure diesel engine coming, after the long delayed Sky Active D engine, using lessons and perhaps technologies developed for Sky Active X. But for now, Sky Active X is the absolute bleeding edge which is not how it feels on the road in the least. It's not supposed to feel bleeding edge, to be fair. There are rough edges, too. But mostly, it feels like a direct injected, high compression gasoline powered car. It does not feel supercharged in the traditional sense, either. Off the line, it's definitely perkier than the anemic 2.0 liter Sky Active G engine and on par with the 2.5 liter non-turbo Sky Active G on paper, although the X's torque curve is fatter. The torque wave continues as revs increase, authoritative but not necessarily sporty. If you want to talk numbers, they're understandably fuzzy. The Sky Active X tune isn't final yet, so horsepower and torque figures are a moving target. In Frankfurt, Mazda said the prototype engine was making about 187 horsepower and 143 pound-feet of torque. 
at Mazda HQ in California, the numbers bandied about are closer to 190 horsepower and 180 pounds to foot of torque. That compares favorably with the 2.5 liter Sky Active G, which makes 184 horsepower and 185 pounds to foot of torque in the Mazda 6 and 187 horsepower 186 pounds to foot in the CX-5. The numbers also differ from the Sky Active D diesel, which makes around 173 horsepower and 310 pounds to foot in other markets where it's currently sold. But before you wonder why it's so much less powerful than the new turbocharged Sky Active G 2.5T that'll be out soon in the Mazda 6, remember this, the Sky Active X engine is really intended to beat the weakling 2.0's fuel economy numbers, 28 city, 38 highway, by as much as 30%, while seriously exceeding its power output of 155 horsepower and 150 pounds to foot in short. It aims to crush the 2.0 liters economy with 2.5 liter power.